بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين نحمده ونستعينه ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا اشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمد عبده ورسوله رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحد العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي عما بعد We begin in the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala We praise him We thank him We seek refuge in him We seek his forgiveness And we bear witness that there is no God but him there is no deity, no entity, no person, no idea worthy of worship other than him. And we bear witness with our full hearts and our full minds that Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu is his final prophet and messenger. I'm a little uncomfortable giving this khutbah today. The last time I've given a khutbah here at UIC was 18 years ago when I was an undergrad myself. Back then, I understood my audience. I knew my audience. I was part of my audience. So giving a khutbah was very easy to do. It came very naturally to me because I knew who I was talking to, I knew what they were dealing with, and I knew what to talk about. But when I was asked to give this khutbah, I hesitated. And I said, what can I say? that'll be impactful? What can I say that'll be inspiring? What can I say that you haven't heard before? What can I say that'll energize you and motivate you to go out back into the world with your head held high as a Muslim? So I thought to myself, I'm not gonna preach to you. I'm not gonna lecture you. I'm not going to tell you what's right and what's wrong, because you all already know that. The only thing that I'm going to do to you today is speak from the heart. And I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that it benefits all of us. So I said to myself, let me put myself in the shoes of a college student at UIC in the year 2020, the first week, maybe the first, the first week of the first semester of 2022. And I said, you know, maybe some of us are struggling with our classes and our class load and the subjects that we've taken. I've been there. Maybe some of us are at the end of our college career and are struggling to look for a job and to figure out what's next. I've been there. Maybe some of us are struggling with problems in your family, whether it's health related or quote unquote political problems within the family. I've been there. Maybe some of you are struggling to get married. I've been there. Maybe some of you are even struggling with the deen. I understand. The one thing that I want to say is I understand it's hard. I may not see or experience or feel the exact same challenges that you're feeling today, right now, as a college student, whether you're an undergrad or you're a graduate student, but I can very much relate to the hardship, the difficulty, the challenges, the obstacles, the struggles of living in this dunya, especially living as a dunya, in this dunya as a Muslim. It's full of hardship. It's full of difficulty. It almost feels everywhere you turn there's some hardship popping out of the blue, some difficulty, some struggle, some challenge, some obstacle that you couldn't have even thought of, thought of that just smacks you upside the side of the head and leaves you wondering, SubhanAllah, what am I going to do now? How do I deal with this challenge? How am I supposed to move forward? What is the way out? And I'll tell you what I've learned from my own life that sometimes 
the more right you do, the more of the good you do, the more you try to stick to the haq, the more you try to do the right thing, the harder it gets. You try to avoid zina and illegal haram relationships, all of a sudden temptation comes your way. You try to avoid haram financial transactions, whether it's interest-bearing, whether it's shady business deals, whether it's opportunities people are presenting to you, you try to do the right thing, and subhanAllah, you have unexpected expenses that come and tempt you to do the wrong thing. You try, and you try, and you try. You try to stay on your salah. You try to fulfill your obligations of visiting your parents, visiting the sick, visiting the elderly, going to the masjid, helping your siblings, fasting, the, 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 the obligations and the nawafil, the sunnahs that aren't an obligation. And all of a sudden you have more difficulties, more challenges, something pops up at school, some scheduling conflict, some issue happens. It's not easy. And I can say with my full heart, I completely understand. And it doesn't stop. It doesn't stop when you end your college career. It continues on in the business world. It continues on in the career world. Constantly faced with challenges, obstacles, especially when you try to do the right thing. Especially when you stick to your convictions. Especially when you obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and when you follow your beliefs. But here's the good news that I have for you. I promise you it's going to get hard. I promise you that you're dealing with difficulty right now. Even though I don't know what it is, I know you're dealing with difficulty. But I promise you, just as I promise you it's going to be hard, I also promise you it's going to be easy. You might be thinking, I'm doing the right thing. I'm doing the right thing and hardships keep popping up. More challenges, more obstacles, more difficulty. The advice that I have for you is smile through it. The advice that I have for you is embrace it. I'm not here to lecture you. I'm not here to tell you something that you haven't even heard before. All I'm here to do is give you a perspective to remind you because we know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that the, belief, the reminder benefits the believers. To remind you, to help you reframe, to help you refocus, to help you recalibrate, to help you reinvigorate. That just as these hardships are going to come and they're going to mount and they're going to come at you unexpectedly, help will come. Stick to your guns. Stay on your being. Do what you know is right. Avoid the haram. And show people that you stand up for what you believe in. That you follow your convictions. That you're not shaken by little trials. You're not thrown off of balance. You're not thrown off your square by difficulty. In fact, you welcome it. And why do I say this? This isn't something you haven't heard before. You may have heard this dozens of times. But the reminder benefits the believers. The Prophet ﷺ said, and it's recorded in the book of Bukhari, that when, whenever Allah desires good for someone, He tries him or her with hardships. I'm going to say that again. Whenever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala means good for someone, He tries them with hardships. It doesn't matter what you're dealing with. Brothers, please move in. Please move forward. There's more brothers coming in the back, maybe even sisters. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves you, He tries you. He tests you. He challenges you. He gives you obstacles. That's just how it is. So if you find yourself in the middle of something that you feel you can't get over, you can't get past, you can't get through, you can't get around, you can't get under, understand that this is exactly what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has written for you. And it's a test. Am I going to buckle? Am I going to cave? Am I going to fall back? Am I going to go back on my beliefs and my word? Am I going to falter? Or am I going to charge forward?
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in Surah an kabut we've heard this, we've read it, we've memorized it, we've recited it. But, reminder benefits the believers. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أَحَسِبَ النَّاسُ أَنْ يُتْرَكُوا أَنْ يَقُولُوا آمَنَّ وَهُمْ لَا يُفْتَنُونَ Does mankind think that they're going to be left alone to say that we believe without being tested? Does mankind think that they will be left alone to say that we believe without being tested? If you are being tested, and I know you are, how do you respond? What's your response to the test? Now someone might say, if Allah loves somebody, why does he test them? Why does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give the ones that he loves hardships and difficulties and heartbreaks and disappointments and failures and obstacles? Why? Well, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't leave you hanging. Because what's the next verse? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the translation of the ayah that he does this to test to see which one of us are truthful and to see which one of us are liars. It's easy to say something. And the only way you know that you're about it is when you're tested. When you're given the opportunity. When you're given the temptation. When you're given the chance to do something shady. How do I respond? What do I do? That is why. So when you find yourself in a hardship, in a difficulty, in a disappointment, and the opportunity is there to do the wrong thing, to do the underhanded thing, to compromise, to back down on your convictions and your beliefs, that's when I ask myself, what am I made of? Do I believe in what I say? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on top of that doesn't leave us hanging. There could be an entire khutbah, there could be an entire lecture series, an entire khutbah series of things that we could do to get the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in these difficulties. And we don't have time to go through all of them right now, and that's not even my purpose today. Whether it's tawbah, whether it's getting in sujood and putting your forehead on the ground and begging your creator for a solution. Whether it's giving salafah, whether it's enjoining the good and forbidding the evil, there are hadith about all of these. And maybe one day, if I'm invited, I can come back and talk about them in more detail. But I want to share one hadith that we've heard before. But again, the reminder of benefits the believers. Ibn Abbas عنه, was a young boy maybe eight years old, 10 years old, somewhere in that range. And he was sitting on the back of the, the, the horse or the camel with the Prophet And the Prophet said, young man, I'll teach you some words. Be mindful of Allah and he will take care of you. Be mindful of him and you shall find him at your side. If you ask Allah, I'm sorry, if you ask, ask Allah. If you need help, seek it from Allah. Know that if the whole world to get, were to gather in order to help you, they wouldn't be able to help you except if Allah had written it. And if the whole world gathered together to harm you, they would not be able to do it except if Allah had written it. The pens have been lifted and the pages are dry. That hadith is a gift to every single one of us. Why? Every single human being is tested. Every single human being, believer and non-believer, Muslim and non-Muslim, sincere, hypocrite, doesn't matter. Every single human being is tested. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Prophet وسلم, have given us the secrets which is that all of these tests are written for us. They have been predetermined by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They have been specified to our unique situation. 
Allah knows what our difficulties are, what our weaknesses are, what our, our situations are, and He gives us each a test tailored specifically to me and you to see how we're going to respond. And the Prophet on top of that tells us that if you're going to ask for help, ask of Allah. If you're going to ask, ask Allah. Of course we take things into our own hands and we do what's within our power. We follow the, the asbab, the means. We follow the, 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 the causes, right? This is the natural law of the universe. But in our heart, we know it comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In our heart, we believe it comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In our heart, we remember that it comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we welcome the challenge. I've said what I've said. Anything wrong that I've said has come from myself and anything beneficial I've said has come from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, wa salatu wa salamu ala Rasulih al-Kareem. What can I say to conclude and to drive the point home? And to motivate you to take this point with you throughout the entire week until the next Salat al Jum'ah. When you're reminded again. And the only thing I thought of is to tell a story. And it's a story of the Battle of Khandaq, Ghazat al Khandaq, the Battle of the Ditch, the Battle of the Trench. We've heard this story as we were kids. We've read about this story. And let me present a few facts to contextualize it. The Prophet and his Sahaba in Medina were in a precarious situation. Here they are in Medina with an army of 10,000 soldiers coming to attack them. Here they are in Medina under siege by these 10,000 soldiers for 30 days. It wasn't a one-day battle. It wasn't a two-day battle. It wasn't a one-week battle. It was 30 days of siege by an alliance, a confederation of Arabian tribes that wanted nothing more than to eliminate Islam and the Muslims. On top of that, as if that's not challenging enough, they had a Jewish tribe on the inside of Medina who secretly made a deal with the Quraysh and the Confederates, the non-Muslims, to allow them in through the back. So the Muslims in Medina are squashed by the onslaught of soldiers from the front, and a contingent of soldiers are led in from the back through the Jewish tribe that had made an alliance with the Prophet ﷺ, not to betray them. Rock in a hard place, difficult situation, obstacle, challenge, hardship, difficulty like I just talked about. What happened? And this is something as we end this khutbah. When things look bleak, when the chips are down, when things look insurmountable, remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will open a way. And what did the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi teach his Sahaba? They were digging through to build that ditch. They had shovels and pickaxes. They were digging, they were digging, they were digging, and they hit a big rock. And they couldn't break through the rock. They couldn't get in through the rock. And as they're digging, they're hitting the rock, sparks are flying. And the Prophet says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Allahu Akbar. The Prophet said, Allahu Akbar. The keys of ancient Syria are granted to me. I swear by Allah, I can see its palaces. That's a winner's mentality. They hit it another time. Another, another spark comes out. And the Prophet said, Allahu Akbar. Persia is granted to me. I swear by Allah, I can now see the white palace of Medan. A winner's mentality. They hit it a third time. Another spark comes out. And the Prophet said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Allahu Akbar, I have been given the keys of Yemen. I swear by Allah, I can see the gates of Sana'a while I'm at my place. A winner's mentality. 
That's the one takeaway I want from this khutbah. No matter how things, how difficult things get, maintain that, that mentality, that victorious mentality, that winner's mentality. That's the mentality of a Muslim. That's the mentality of a mu'min, of a believer who understands. And let me conclude this khutbah and this story. What happened in that precarious, difficult, terrifying situation? What happened? Ah, the help of Allah came. There was a man who wasn't known as a Muslim. He was actually a non-Muslim, and everyone knew that. Perhaps his name was Naim bin Mas'ud. We can go back and check. He came to the Prophet وسلم, and he said, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, ashhadu anna Muhammadar Rasulullah. He testified his belief in Islam and in the Prophet and in Allah. So what did he do? He goes to the Quraysh on the outside. He said, Oh man, the Jewish tribe, Banu Quraida, they're having second thoughts. I wouldn't trust those guys. If you go into the back, they're actually gonna sneak attack, they're gonna betray what they told you, they're gonna attack you. So they put a second thought in the Quraysh's mind. So this man also went to the Jews, to the Jewish tribe. Again, they didn't know he'd become Muslim. He said, oh man, you know the, the Quraysh? They don't really trust you. They, they're not really sure that you're gonna, you're gonna stick to your word, so you're kinda on your own. Who could have thought about that? That a man who was a non-Muslim, in a situation where the Muslims were about to be crushed and destroyed and defeated and eliminated, that someone would have come became Muslim, created this, 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 this dissension and this mistrust amongst these two enemies of Islam to the point where the Muslims ended up being victorious and we know how the story ends with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sending the wind that overturned their tents and their pots and their supplies and all of that and it discouraged them and they ended up leaving. Don't back down. إِنَّ اللَّهُ مَلَائِكَتَهُ يُصَلُّونَ عَلَى النَّبِيهِ يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمِنُوا صَلُّوا عَلَيْهِ وَسَلِّمُوا تَسْلِيمًا اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد اللهم أنصر الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم أنصر الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم أنصر الإسلام والمسلمين أقيم الصلاة